Here's my first example. So have a look at it. Um, you've got a mass of four kilos. It's um, something that I haven't written there, maybe you want to add, is that it's dropped from a very great height. Okay, so we're considering air resistance right now. Air resistance is proportional to the speed, and we're calling the speed V. Now, please know, this is just one of the reasons why you have to be careful about how you define your positive and negative. You'll frequently see this. And for me, when I first encountered these questions, this was maddening, because I was like, why are you calling speed V? Can anyone tell me why that's a weird decision to make? V Because V, you usually indicate as velocity, which is a, which is a, a vector, has direction in it, whereas speed is not. Now, it turns out that this is actually critically important, that we consider it just as positive, and we take care of direction by doing this, okay? So this number here, despite being called V, it is the speed, and I don't know what it's, it's, it's always gonna be just a magnitude, so I don't know about its direction. Um, the question will often say, the constant of proportionality that, d that describes what this relationship is, and then they'll give you a number, okay? So let's simply talk about how this and this are related to each other. In other words, the air resistance is an eighth of whatever your speed is, okay? Is there something else I was gonna mention? Yeah. Um, would gravity be meters per second squared instead of meters? Yeah, of course it is. Okay. Oh, I remember what I was going to mention. Um, what you will find is for these air resistance or water resistance questions, that kind of thing, you will pretty much have one of two things. Air resistance or whatever resistance will be proportional to the speed, or it will be proportional to the square of the speed. Okay. Now, just, just think for a second. When do you think you would get the square of the speed versus just the speed? When you find it the um, okay, oh, so um, this is still this is still like talking about the speed itself, not worrying about velocity at the moment. We'll get to that though. It will define it will change which um which expression you would use for acceleration. Yeah. That's fine. I'm just thinking more physically, right? If you're proportional to the square of the speed, rather than just affecting uh, proportional to the speed, does your speed mean more resistance or less resistance as your speed increases? It's more, right? Clearly, like whatever effect you've got, it's being exaggerated. Okay, so basically, this power, like, there's no reason why it has to be one or two. We're just doing it to keep our algebra and our calculus simple. As your power goes up, what that refers to is how viscous the material is that you're running through. Okay, so what you'll have is sometimes you'll have a like a weight and it's dropped in like a mud swamp. Okay, so that's super super thick, very very viscous. So you're going to get something like v squared, whereas air, we tend to just stick with v. Okay. So, four questions for you. I wonder if you can make a start before I start to hold your hand through it. I'm looking for velocity as a function of time. After you've got that velocity time function, can you draw for me what that looks like? How is the velocity changing as time progresses? Can you find terminal velocity? That's what, where this will come in, okay? And then lastly, you had velocity in terms of time. Can you find displacement <coughs> in terms of time? And in reality, a question like this would usually go to like, okay, well, Therefore, when are you at such and such a place? But we'll just stop at getting the function, okay? So, here are all my clues. Here are all the things that you need. To find a positive for me, note, it was dropped from a great height. So I'm just going to say the mass was dropped. Make a start. Draw a diagram. Let's say that. And um, I'll let you get a couple of minutes head start before I show you my solution. Okay? Go for Maybe it. you can sort of guide me through how do we even start this, okay? Now, I'm looking for a velocity time expression, function. I haven't finished my diagram yet, but I've made a start. You can see, I started from up here. I have to find down as positive and the particle drops from the origin. So this is my starting point up here, O, okay? So here is the particle at a particular instant in time. Now I have some forces acting. Someone tell me what kind of forces I've got. Okay, so gravity, right? Gravity acting downwards, get used to it. I mean, we've already written this a couple of times. Gravity is always influenced by how much mass you have, okay? So mass times gravity, which is going to be, in this case, 4G, okay? Hope the reception's good up there. Okay, now you've got mass times gravity acting downwards, but you've got the opposing, the resistance opposing you, right? So up here, just as a customary way, because it's proportional, Right? That means it's this times some kind of constant, okay? Now I'm just going to write that as kV. I'm not even going to bother defining k because they've defined k. It's an eighth, okay? So I've got here an eighth v, right? 
Now, because I've got arrows on here indicating direction, I'm not going to say that's negative n8v, even though it will be once I write my equation. This is what's telling me what's going on. Okay. By the way, down here, you might notice, I've drawn my axis there, and then there's my positive displacement on that arrow. Okay. So, so far, so good. I've got my diagram now. What might be the first line I write? Can you take this? I'm just going to write that. Now, I heard someone say resolving forces. Uh, in this particular example, I don't need, I won't need to. This is why it doesn't appear over here. I won't need to resolve any forces. When do I need to resolve forces? What is it that makes force resolution necessary? On an angle? Yeah, it's when, it's when things are like off in funny directions. And you're like, there's a horizontal bit, and there's a vertical bit, and I need to kind of sort them out. But here, everything is simply up down. So luckily for us, no resolution required. Okay. I always like to start with this um, because now I can use that to explain from all of this information what my next line will be. Okay? So we'll start with the easy side, which is the right hand side. I know what the mass is, it's four. Now I've got a whole bunch of different ways to write acceleration that I can choose from. Okay? Now just for the sake of it, over here, can you help me remember <coughs> acceleration? How many different ways can we write this? Let's just start with the easiest one, the one I've already got on the board. I'm just going to say A first, okay? Don't, don't ignore it. Sometimes you just leave things in terms of A, because that's fine. What might I do next? Okay, so I've got, I heard a couple. So I'm going to go with X double dot first. I mean, there's no real order to these, but I think this is like the simplest, the simplest ways, okay? The X double dot, remember, what do the dots mean by definition? Why are they not dashes? I'm differentiating in a particular way with respect to time, right? So this is really a shorthand way of saying this, okay? I've got one, two, three. How many do I have left? Three. Three? So, so give me the next one. Okay, so because you're the second derivative of displacement, that means you're the first derivative of velocity. Okay, last two, the trickiest ones. Okay, d on dx of half v squared, and last one. Okay, good. So, I, even though it's, I mean, you've got this on the reference sheet and all that kind of thing, but I kind of like to write these out because it helps me work out, like, what's my next step? I just have my choices laid out here, right? Now think about where you're going, think about where you're going, which is the most obvious choice? Yeah, I want V and I want T, right? So I think I'm going to choose dV on dt. That's mass times acceleration, okay? Um, I will point out, it's not zero. Why isn't it zero? Why is it not zero? Why is it mass times acceleration? Why isn't it zero? It's a thing. This is, this is a function that varies. What would make it be zero? If that would do stationary. If we're stationary or moving in a uniform straight line. Now, I'm not there yet. There will be a point where that's zero, but I don't know what it is yet, so I just leave it as is. Okay, so now I refer to my diagram. What forces are acting on my object, on my particle? Hmm. One of these is positive and one is negative. Okay, we tend to write positive things first. So, so yeah, this is the positive one because I've defined down as positive, and this is my negative one. Does that look good? Yeah. Yes? Lovely. Okay. So now from there, what we suggest I do next? Oh, hold on a second. So I'm going to pause. Uh, just so my numbers end up the same. I don't know why I did this. Sorry, guys. In this question, they said mass 5 kilos. Um, that's not going to change very much. It's just a constant. But that way, my numbers will agree with what I worked out earlier, which is always a loss. Ah, thanks. Okay, so now seeing where I'm going, right? Seeing where I'm going, what kind of computation do I have to do here? I'm looking a bit puzzled. Something not up? Not right? Wait, oh, you changed the mass? No, just I got the yeah, I, did. I, I, I got yeah, That's so fine, that's okay, that's well, alright. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's just going to be 80, just, well, 120, 80%, you'll be 80% of me. Okay, mostly. Uh, okay, okay, so I'm going to divide through, like, it's just a constant, yeah? It's just a constant. So I'm trying to get to dv and because then I can... How am I going to get it? I'm going to integrate. So I'm going to shift this over and divide through at the same time. That gives me this. Or perhaps 132. Okay. From here, 
What's my next step? Uh, I have to take the reciprocal because... All in terms of V. Okay, so I'm just going to do one thing before I flip, which is turn this into a single fraction, right? Common denominator. So this looks like 40G take away V on 40. Okay, now I'm ready to do a Reynard. So there I go. Come on, a double Reynard. <laughs> so a Reynard is only when you do it to one side. Oh, I see. Okay, so I did it properly. So, it's a, um, so here we go. I've got this. Now I'm ready to integrate. Now I will point out just like yesterday, at this point, if you want, you could put in a definite integral here. If you know, like, you've got conditions here, like at time zero, can you tell me some things that we know at time zero? Um, x equals zero, v equals zero. Okay, good, because it was just Wait, dropped. Wait, wouldn't x be the height of the building? Ah, now, it, de it depends entirely on how you define it, okay? And I will define it differently later, but I've defined the origin as where it got dropped from, right? Oh, so up there, like you f said the first time, it's x equals zero. Okay, so far so good. And now I'm going to integrate. I'm going to stay with the indefinite integral. I don't know here, I'm very happy to do the definite one if you like. When I integrate this. Okay, now you may like to write this uh, 40 out the front. What is this thing? Okay, so this is going to be a log, but look, because of chain rule in there, there's a negative that's going to be out the front. So this is negative 40. Plus a cos Okay. So I'm pretty much there. Now just watch out. Time zero. Um, when I put in time zero, this thing is non-trivial. The cos is not just going to become zero. It's going to become something. So you can see, if I put in time zero, velocity is zero because it just got dropped. Okay. So if I've got zero here and zero there, that's a negative, right? So that's going to go over the other side. So what would the constant be? 40 ln. 40 log 40g, right? So when t equals zero, you can do your substitution and I'm going to write there, you'll get this constant, or 32g, 